Section 7.5, Conditional Probability and Independent Events. So for this section, we're mainly going to be using this formula here. Um, an event E given event F. So our hint for using this formula is the word given. So um, we need to find what is the probability of both of the events happening at the same time, and then divide it by the given event. So a single fair die is rolled. Find the probability of the following results. A 2, given the number rolled, was odd. So first we need to figure out what the probability of a 2 and a 0 are if we were to roll them together. Well, excuse me, a 2 and an odd number, given they were rolled together. Well, it's not possible because 2 is an even number and we first rolled an odd. So, zero, this can't happen because two is even. What is the probability um, an even number given the number rolled was a six? So, the, num the probability of getting a six and an even number is one out of six chances. And the probability of giving just a 6 is also 1 out of 6 chances. So therefore, our denominators cancel and we're looking at 1. Which should make sense because if we had already rolled a 6, 6 is already even, so it's already hands down a, a for sure event. Two fair dice are rolled. Find the probabilities of the following results. A sum of 8, given that the sum is greater than 7. So we, of the numbers that are rolled, that are the sum is greater than 7, how many of those are also a sum of 8? So, we could roll a 6 and a 2, so that sum is greater than 7. At the same time, their sum is 8. We could roll a 5 and a 3, a 4 and a 4, a 3 and a 5, and a 2 and a 6. All of those options, their sum is greater than 7, and at the same time, their sum is 8. So those can, two conditions apply. So remember that there are 36 options in rolling two dice, and we've just listed one, two, three, four, five of those options. And then what are the odds, or excuse me, the probability that the sum is greater than seven? Well, we also have uh, six and three, six and four, six and five, six and six. We could have five and four, 5 and 5, 5 and 6, 4 and 5, 4 and 6, 3 and 6. So the probability that the given sum is greater than 7, this was going to be our denominator, we, we have to include all of these, is let's see, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 out of the 36. Our denominators cancel, giving us 5 out of 15 which is the same as one-third. What is the probability of getting a double given that the sum was nine? Well, our only options for doubles are one and one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six, seven, 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 there's no sevens in dice. All right, one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six. Of those options, how many are also a sum of nine? Well, no doubles are equivalent to nine, so the probability is zero. Since no doubles add to nine. Therefore, we can't complete the first part of the, the formula. Sometimes this can be tricky, so I'm going to show you how we can use a, a tree diagram to help us determine the probabilities in a more visual manner. 
So if two cards are drawn without replacement from an ordinary deck, find the probability of the following results. So we're not replacing the cards. So every time we draw a card, we're losing a card from the deck. So the second is a heart, given that the first is a heart. So we're going to start with the first is a heart. So we have either the option of drawing a heart, or it's not a heart, right, when we draw a card. How many of those 52 are hearts? Well, there are 13 13 out of 52 are hearts. But now we have to draw again because we want that the second is also a heart. So if we draw again, we can either get a heart or not a heart. But now, if one of our cards is missing, we only have 51 cards in our deck. And if we already took a heart, we're missing a heart, so we only have 12 out of 51 that is a heart. So we have 12 out of 51, which can reduce to 4 seventeenths. And this way of grabbing the probability is much easier, in my opinion, drawing a visual tree, kind of visually thinking it out. How about the second is a face card, given that the first card we draw is a jack. So we have two options. We can either draw a jack, or we can draw not a jack. All right, there are four jacks in a deck, so four out of 52 are jacks. And then obviously, um, if they're not a jack, the rest of the cards, uh, so 48 out of 52 are not a jack. But it doesn't matter, because we're only curious about the jack. And then the second is a face card. So then we can either draw a face card or not a face card. Um, we've lost a card because we already drew a jack. So we're down to 51 cards. And jack is already a face uh, a face card. So we went from having 12 face cards, losing a face card. So we had 12 total face cards in a deck. We lost one of them, so now we only have 11 face cards in our deck. So 11 out of 51 is our probability that if we draw a jack first, the second card we draw is a face card. We can also use, and as a hint, before we go on to the next part, you're going to use this method that we just talked about in your homework for number 10 and number 12. What if we draw two cards at the same time? Then we need to multiply their probabilities together, and we can still utilize our, our tree diagram. So let's tackle that first. So the product rule, uh, we have jack and a 10 are drawn. So let's first care about the jack. So we can either get a jack or not jack. We determined that obtaining a jack, we would have 4 out of 52 for our probability. And then if we were to draw a jack and we could either draw a 10 or not a 10. We now only have 51 cards in our deck. There are 4 out of 51 that are jacks, excuse me, that are 10s. So now we just need to multiply these together. So 4 over 52 times 4 out of 51. Remember, we multiply fractions, go straight across. So 16 over 1326, which reduces to 8 out of 663. That we draw a jack and a 10 at the very same time out of the deck. Let's determine um, two black cards are drawn. So we can still use um, the picture above. So we draw a black card, or not a black card. So half the deck is black, so 26 out of the 52 cards are black. And then we're going to draw another black card. 
So we have black or not black. We now only have 51 cards since we already drew 50 uh, black card before. And we went from having 26 black cards since we already drew a black card to now we only have 25 black cards left in our deck. So uh, 26 out of 52 is the same as 1 half, so we'll simplify here a little bit before we move forward. So again, we want to multiply these two numbers together. So 1 half times 25 out of 51 is equal to 25 out of 102 as our probability. You'll probably like this method the most because it's most visual and it's easier to think out as you go forward. Um, and then this pro these, these examples, the ones we just did, will help you with number... 14 and 16 in your homework. The final part is to determine if the value of the second event is not affected by the first event, we call them independent events. The fact that the first event influences the outcome of a second event, we will call it dependent events. So the last couple of examples, we call them dependent events because whatever happened, whatever we drew from the first card affected the outcome of our second card. So a red die and a green die are rolled. A is the event that the red die comes up even, and B is the event that the green die comes up even. Decide if this is an independent or dependent event. I'm saying that this is independent because we're rolling two completely separate die that have nothing to do with each other. E is the event that a resident of Texas lives in Dallas. F is the event that a resident of Texas lives in either Dallas or Houston. Yes, these are definitely dependent events. Because event F has an effect on whether event E happens or not. And this concludes section 7.5, conditional probability, independent events.